The Texas A&M Aggies just can't seem to adjust in the second half. Why is that? You are Locked On Aggies. Your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome on into Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. The second half adjustments have been absolutely non existent. I think that's one thing coaches that really separate really good football coaches is how they adjust in the second half. You know, there's some football teams like a great example of that is George is, is I think Kirby smart's been doing a great job of it. I looked at, I mean, I was watching that South Carolina game and I'm like, man, is Georgia going to lose? And then they just came out in the second half and absolutely dominated a few weeks ago. And You know, looking at the performance like that and then looking at a performance like this from the Aggies and last week from the Aggies, it's just, what is going on? Listen to the stat from Carter Carroll's. He says, in the second half of its last three games combined, Texas A&M has scored only nine points and committed six turnovers. In 18 drives, seven punts, six turnovers, three missed field goals, one safety, one turnover on downs. This offense is a problem and can't adjust at all. I, you know, you look at these things and, and you. I, I would love to try and find, I mean, a reason. Maybe you could talk about scheme. You could talk about execution. Frankly, now, once again, when we talk about coaches here on the show, I want to clarify this because we're going to talk a lot about coaching today. When we... Mm, Excuse me. When we talk about coaching, players have to go out and execute. I am not, you know, I understand that. I'm not sitting here blind to that going, well, I know that Coach Fisher can't go out and kick a field goal and can't go out and not throw an interception. I know that. But there are still a lot of things that coaches do to set a team up for success. And frankly, I don't think that's been there. The the second half adjustments just have been non-existent you you have to have it you have to have if you come out Texas A&M's led back-to-back games they led on the road yesterday they led or or on Saturday excuse me they led on the road against Tennessee a ranked team in Neyland a great football team in an electric atmosphere you lead at halftime you do a great job on defense of bottling up Joe Milton not letting him throw the football all that well he was pretty inaccurate, and then your offense just can't come out in the second half and get it done. Another thing, I, I think I, I think the conversation needs to be had, but I do think that we're starting to see how much we miss Connor Wigman. Now, listen, before, before I, you know, I get it. The offensive line has been atrocious. We're going to run through the numbers of how bad this offensive line was in segment three, but – I get the offensive line was bad. I'm not totally knocking Max Johnson. I I don't think you can sit here and fully put this on him and say, you know, that's on Max Johnson. There's nobody else that's on but him. I don't think that's the case. Um, I think that looking at this, he, credit to Max Johnson. I mean, he is taking some hits. He is standing in the pocket and getting absolutely hammered almost every play. Credit to him. Maybe with the clean offensive line, you could argue that that the drop off isn't as severe, but but we don't we don't know because we don't have a good offensive line to give Max Johnson time to know what the issue is. It's just, I mean, we saw against a team that doesn't really have much of a pass rush in Auburn that Max Johnson, when he has time in the pocket, he can pick you apart. But yeah, I just think Connor Wigman, I just think you're missing him right now. And that's just part of it. So once again, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna knock on Coach Fisher today a whole heck of a lot. But at the end of the day, 
there's a lot that hasn't gone his way. I don't like to make excuses, but he loses his quarterback. You know, it's stuff did not go coach's way. But at the end of the day, once again, it's part of coaching. Stuff happens. You lose players. Carson Wentz goes down. What do the Eagles do? They win a Super Bowl with Nick Foles. You got to find a way to, win, you know, adjust and win football games regardless. But back to these second half adjustments, it really just feels like if they, if Texas A&M is able to get that one drive, that one touchdown in the second half that they could win these football games, and they just can't seem to get it. And, of course, that eventually leads to you losing the field position battle. What happens? You An amazing punt from the Tennessee punter. Little things right there. Those are the little things in football that make a difference. Tennessee's punter uh, pulls out his lob wedge and, and, and backs one up from 100 yards out, finds a way to stick the Aggies to the half-yard line. You can't get the football away from it. You can't with a couple runs and then – and like right there, that play call, that play call where you throw the little, and they said this on the broadcast, but where you throw that little out route to Jake Johnson, it's like, why not throw a slant to one of your speedsters, throw a slant to an eye, see what he can do with his legs. I don't understand that play call. Those are the little things that are frustrating. But then what happens? You aren't able to do the football. Constantino is standing on the back of the goal line pretty much. Fields the punt, only able to kick the ball 40 yards because he or 30 yards total, you know, not total punt yards, but total yards because he doesn't have his normal step into it because he's got to get rid of the football. What happens? Tennessee brings it back to the house or takes it back to the house. I think that the second half adjustments, the lack of them, it, it, it makes you really start to have concerns with the coaching. It doesn't make any sense to me how you can't go sit in that halftime locker room and say and figure something out and figure out, okay, we're here. We are 30 minutes away. We've got the lead. We are almost home. we got to finish strong, and they just haven't been able to do it. Like I said, that, that quote I read from Carter Carroll's, it, it's, just, it's just incredibly frustrating to see this football team continue to be in the game. Tennessee, Alabama. Good football teams. These are good football teams. These are not, you know, you're not playing Auburn and Arkansas anymore. These are quality football teams, ranked football teams. And you're in the game with them. That's what that's what else frustrates me as well. Is it's not like I said this on the reaction show, and it's not like I'd prefer this, but it's not like you're losing by 30 to these teams. These are considered, you know, some of the uh, some of the best teams in your conference, some of the best teams in college football. And you're there with them. You could argue, had some things gone your way, had you executed better in the second half, you should have won these football games. So I think it, it, I think that's why Texas and fans should and are, be frustrated and are frustrated is because you watch these games back, it's not like it's a skill issue. And frankly, looking at this roster, we knew it would never be a skill issue. We knew that would never be the issue. The issue in this game was this team is not – executing in the second half. And I, I I think you could argue that the coaching staff isn't really putting this team in the best position to succeed in the second half. I, I just haven't been impressed with uh, the second half, just straight up adjustments. It's something that has got to get fixed. I mean, the Aggies are four and three. What do you do now? Where do you go from here now? First of all, this is the bye week, which is a good news, which is good news. You got your bye week. You got to get healthy. You had some guys. You got Cooper go down. You had Walt go down, which another thing I talked about on the reaction show, but that was just hard to see. Um, but you have players. You have some banged up players. You have some players that could really use this. They could really use this bye week. What hurts is now if you want to go eight and four, you have to find a way to beat Ole Miss or LSU on the road. That's going to be the only way that you're able to get this thing to eight and four and then have that able to get it to eight and four and then have a kind of rebound you need to finish this season successfully. Uh, I mean, you still got, you got South Carolina at home after the bye week You got to go to Ole Miss. You got Mississippi State coming to town. You got Abilene Christian coming to town. And then you got to go to LSU. So you've got uh, five games left. 
you got to find a way to uh, win four of them. So it'll be interesting to see how the Aggies kind of adjust in this game. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to turn this season around. I mean, you, you can, you, as a team, you can make decisions. You can hang your head. You can say, well, man, we were in it. We should have won. You can hang your head. You can do all that. But at the end of the day, you got to find a way to turn things around. And the Aggies need this bye week. Get yourself, get it figured out. Sit down and, and see how you can fix things going forward. We're going to talk about, is it time? What do we need to see this year? And just flat out talk about Coach Fisher and his future at Texas A&M coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the best place to go get your last-minute tickets. I absolutely love Game Time. I use it to get all of my tickets, whether it's to comedy, whether it's to a ball game, whether it is to a concert, whatever it might be, Game Time is the place to get your tickets. I love Game Time, and I highly recommend using it. It, it's truly just the perfect place to – they beat the competition. It's a place where you go to game time. Tickets are going to be cheap compared to other places. You can get them last minute. So that's what I do when I go to an event. I wait a little bit. I wait until, you know, hour to game time, hour to concert. Go to game time and get my tickets. It's the best place to get them. I highly recommend it. You will not regret it. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. We also got to talk about our friends at Prize Picks. It you know there's a Monday Night Football game coming up tonight. Prize Picks is the best place to. Do all your betting. Do your over unders. Hey, who, who? I don't know who plays on Monday night, but is you know? Hey, let's say it's the Bengals. I don't know that. Is Joe Burrow? I'm wearing a Josh Allen shirt. Is Josh Allen going to have over two fifty nine through the air? Is uh, James Cook going to have forty nine yards on the ground? Prize Picks is a place you can go and you can pick your over unders. You can do everything on Prize Picks. It is my favorite app to do live game betting, in-game betting, and pre-game betting when it comes to player props in everything, I highly recommend heading over to Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a for a first deposit match up to $100. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college, use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. It's time to start to have this conversation. You know, I've seen everybody in the on Twitter. Is it time to start having the get rid of Coach Fisher conversation? Now, I want this to be an open conversation. I'm going to lay out my thoughts. I want y'all to give me your thoughts. Um, so let me know what you all think on this conversation. I want this to be back and forth. This topic is going to continue to heat up. I don't, I don't like having had this conversation, but we're getting to the point where it has to be had. So everybody, let me know your thoughts on this situation in the comments. I'm going to give my opinion right now, but let me know what you think on this in the YouTube comments. Um, I, I think Coach Fisher has not done a great job these last two games. I think he's been conservative at times. I don't think being conservative is how you beat Ala, uh, 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 beat an Alabama team at home and beat a ranked Tennessee team in Neyland. That's not how you do it. Um, I, I think that I, – I, I just – I don't think Coach Fisher has done a good enough job with his football team, with a really good football team. And looking back on all three of Texas A&M's loss, the one loss that was – you could argue the Aggies really weren't ever in there was the loss to Miami. I, I know Miami gifted you a couple touchdowns, but I, I think that this is just a game where, or that was just a game where a, a few things go your way and you win that ball game in, in the Miami game. I get it. I, my, I still have Miami fans in my comments. I'm not, Miami's a good football team. Miami won that game, deserved to win that game. But but what I'm saying is 
I think schematically, if the defense would have gone about the game the way they have these last few games, they would have been that would have been a closer game. And then you look at the Tennessee game and the Alabama game, it really seems like the Aggies were in that thing from start to finish. Both of those games, you have halftime leads. Then you just flat out don't adjust and lose those games. I don't, I don't know what you have to do. Uh, you know, so that's what's frustrating, I think, is you've lost three games. But those three games that you've lost, you were in there. You were in there, and you could argue you had a chance to win all this. The, the Tennessee and Alabama game, you definitely had a chance to win those. The Miami game, I think you could argue maybe a different scheme and some things go go a little bit different. You were in that ball game too. That's what's frustrating. There really hasn't been a game, in my opinion, that the Aggies have lost this season that it was just like, hey, we got completely outplayed. We lost to the better football team. Uh, and that's what's so frustrating is you're playing really good football teams, losing to really good football teams, Miami, Tennessee, Bama, ranked really solid football teams. And you're losing games that you were there. You're losing games that you were competing in. You were fighting in. You were right there with them in these ball games. And it's just extremely, extremely frustrating. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know what you need to do with coach Fisher at this point. It's like, so my thought on the, my thought on the coach fish situation is this right here. 2024, I've talked about it, and, and this is a, a topic I'm going to continue to repeat, but I've kind of got a different thought on it. 2024 is I've always considered to be the year. All of those players that you have that are 2022 players that are talented, that's going to be their third year here. I look at this and I kind of go, you know, I look, I look at this and I go, that's your year. That season is your opportunity to really make a run at this, to really make a run of the championship, which is possible. Once again, that's the thing. You can look at this season. You can look at this season for Texas A&M and go, whoa, championship next year. What are you talking about? We're terrible. This team is not terrible. I, I think that coaching has caused issues. Some, some execution has been problematic, but this is a talented football team that when it pops is going to be dangerous. It just wasn't this year like many hoped. It can be next year. And listen, it might not be. I don't want people to say, well, I don't want people sitting here listening to this to think I'm saying the Aggies are winning national championship in 2024. Place your bets. It's guaranteed it's happening. I don't think that. I just think going into this year, I said this, if I had to pick a season where the Aggies were going to pop, it was 2024, not this year. So I think that if you were to pull the trigger and fire Coach Fisher right now, on top of that monumental buyout, What's going to happen for this for, for next year? You're losing all these recruits. You're going to lose a ton of players to the transfer portal. What you know? What good do you ex do you expect to come from that? That that is my take on the situation. I'm just a believer that if you get rid of Coach Fisher right now, it, nothing good's going to come from it. I would give him 2024. Now listen, like the, I, me sitting here backing Coach Fisher. 2024 is is his leash. If he doesn't succeed in 2024, sayonara. I am done. Done. I want to be done now, but I just think the best thing for Texas A&M is holding on to Coach Fisher. The, you know, you want to talk about the ability to win a championship. I think the best chance for Texas A&M to win a championship next season is with Coach Fisher sticking around, which is hopefully going to keep around most of the players on this year's roster and keep around this uber talented 2024 recruiting class. If you, if you fire coach Fisher and lose 30 guys to the portal, lose all these recruits, how do you expect to, to hire somebody and, and, you know, and it's all going to get fixed and good to go for next season. Um, so that's my take on the matter. I just think that, like I said, I just think that I, I I'm in, I mean, I'm in, I'm frustrated with coach. I'm really extremely frustrated from what we saw on the field yesterday, the lack of, or I'm sorry, on Sunday, uh, Saturday, the lack of second half adjustments that this team has just continued to put together, uh, this coaching staff. It, it's it's frustrating, and, and Coach Fisher has me really irked, you know, really irked about what we've seen this year on the field. I just think what's best for Texas A&M right now is sticking with him one more year in seeing what he's able to do. You know, there's been a lot of times that coaches, and I, I know I've made this argument before, I, I've almost kind of passed this argument, but there's been times before that coaches 
were going to get fired and then they held on to him and then they, you know, stuff went in the right, right direction. Could that be the case for Coach Fisher? I don't know, but I just don't know if it's time to pull the trigger on Coach Fisher yet simply because of what the fallout would be for this current roster, this recruiting class. And I just think the outlook for next season, it, it, you know, it would, would, would decrease. So look at it like this. This is how I see it. I see it as simple as this. You look at this football team. You want to go, what, what, is our, is our, what is our best chance to win next season? Bring in a random coach who's going to have to replace the 40 people that transfer and all of the recruits you lose? Or have Coach Fisher coach the current talent and the recruits he brings in in hopes of turning this thing around and finding a way to uh, win in 2024, win a championship, find a way to succeed? I'm going to go with option B there. I just think you stick with them one more year, and if it doesn't pan out, then move on, and I am completely cool with that. We're going to talk about some stats and some ugly PFF grades coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. Our friends over at Athletic Brewing Company has the best non-alcoholic brews in the game. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, full flavor, and well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. Their brews are great-tasting and award-winning and beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beers, including IPAs, Golden, Sours, and more. They're constantly releasing limited-edition experimental styles to add to their variety. I absolutely love athletic brewing company i was really skeptical i was really excited to taste what they had to offer they sent me a six pack and i absolutely loved it i just ordered myself some more it is incredible stuff you have got to check them out you can find athletic brewing companies non-athletic brew a non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com first-time customers can use code locked on to get 15 percent off your first order that's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. The PFF grades were ugly. I mean, we're just flat out ugly in this ballgame. This was probably, not probably, this was the worst team PFF grade we have seen from the Aggies this season. The team graded out at a 60.9. That was one point behind the Miami loss. That was 61.9. I mean, this, this the offensive line, and I, I wanted to wait, you know, talk about how bad the offensive line was. We have a whole week of shows with it being the bye week that we're going to break down the season, break down what's got to be fixed, talk about some stars of the season so far different stuff like that. So, um, you know, we'll talk more about the offensive line throughout the week is why I didn't hammer it hard today. But the PFF grades, Layden Robinson graded out well. Everybody else graded out horribly. I mean, this offensive line graded out horribly, which once again, if you watch the game, which I know all y'all everydayers and myself obviously did, you know how bad this offensive line was. I mean, it was just bad. They did not do a good job. They did not protect Max Johnson. The run game was bad. Th this game was just all around ugly, and the Aggies couldn't find a way to get the big win they needed. Um, so, like I said, lowest, lowest team grade. The pass passing game grade for the team was a 29.9, and the pass blocking grade for the team was a 21.6. It is really hard to win a football game when your pass blocking and pass game is that bad, grades out that bad. It's just not easy to win a football game like that. So, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's it's no surprise how bad this was. And once again, I, I didn't want to, you know, when we talk about the Aggies were right in this game, Tennessee, I don't think play, I don't, I don't, I keep saying, I don't think, I know didn't play their best football game, but they found a way to win. The Aggies keep finding ways to lose and not finding ways to win. They got to start finding ways to win these close football games. And so far this season, they really just haven't done that. And it's becoming frustrating. 
So looking at stats on the season, on the on the on the game, excuse me, Max Johnson was 16 for 34, 223 yards, two interceptions, QBR of 39.7. Le'Veon Moss had 15 carries for 62 yards, 4.1 yards a carry. Ruben Owens had five carries for 16 yards, 3.2 yards a carry. We did see one thing that we wanted, which was a, a, a run longer than nine yards. They kept talking about on the broadcast how Texas A&M in the Alabama game and you know some of the previous games, their like long run was nine yards. We talked about that last week preview in the Tennessee game. They did have a 20-yard run or 19-yard run, excuse me, from Le'Veon Moss, so that was good to see. Still not a 30 or 40-yarder like we were kind of hoping for on the show, but still better. Um, Noah Thomas graded out well on PFF and he had three catches for 75 yards in this game, the, along with 29. Once again, he, he, um, he made a couple big catches in this game. Noah Thomas is going to be a great player for a long time. I'm glad to see he's kind of taken this step this year. He's been banged up. He's been dealing with injuries. So I don't think we've seen him fully unleashed, but the future is bright for that young man. And I'm excited to see what he's going to do the rest of the year and going forward at Texas A&M. Evan Stewart was four for 48. Max Wright was three for 26. He made some good plays. Anaya Smith, one catch for 20 yards. It's crazy that you couldn't get the ball to Anaya Moore. Le'Veon Moss had a reception for 19 yards. Ruben Owens had a reception for 13. Jake had a reception for 13 for 11. And then Moose had two receptions for 11 yards. Defense, uh, York led the team in tackles with nine. He had two and a half tackles for loss. Another good game from the freshman. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break down this game more this week and, and talk about what's got to be better. How can you kind of fix the season? What are we going to do going forward and just do some fun by week stuff throughout the week? Team needs to get healthy. Team needs to rest up. There is a lot to fix and a lot to discuss if you are a Texas A&M fan. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. I hope everybody had an outstanding weekend. Have a good bye week. Stick with me throughout the week. We have a lot of fun topics. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you haven't already and review the show on podcast platforms. That really helps. I appreciate y'all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Monday, and we will see you tomorrow.